Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Premiere Scripting tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you all about rendering and this gives us access to render things with a script directly out of Premiere as well as some useful things that we can send in terms of code to Media Encoder and encode specific projects or sequences. Before we get started with this video, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the link for this code in the GitHub, as well as for this Premiere script editor extension, where you can edit and run scripts directly in Premiere. Also in the description, make sure you follow us on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not a member of the Discord server, you can come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, hang out with some of our members and VIPs, and much more. And if you'd like to help support the YouTube channel and become a member like some of these people in our Discord server, you can click on the link in the description to become a YouTube channel member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to open up a new script file and make sure it's clean. And we're going to first start off by grabbing our sequence that we want to render directly out of Premiere. So I'll say var sequence is equal to app.project.active sequence. And this, of course, assumes there's a sequence open here uh, being viewed. Now let's go ahead and reference our scripting guide and type in .export. And you can see we have sequence.export as Final Cut. So if you need to do that in particular, which is a bit of an older thing, but some people still use it, uh, you can do that. Um, and there are a couple of export things that we can look at that are super useful. This is the first one, and that's sequence.export as media direct. This is basically like a direct export by going to File, Export Media, and you're going to be rendering directly out of Premiere. So with export as media direct, it requires an output path, a preset path, and a work area type. The output path is obviously the folder that we're going to save it to. And it has a question mark next to preset path. But if you want to access your presets for media encoder, you just go to your documents, Adobe, Adobe media encoder, the version you want to use. So you may have to do some extra coding to uh, make sure you're using the right version, or you can just grab any version. Uh, then go to presets. And here we have any EPR files. I use a couple of presets. I have an Instagram uh, preset, and I have a max quality that cranks up the bitrate. And I can just link to the path of one of these to use that in our render. And lastly, we have the work area type. This is whether we want to render out the entire project, the in and out points, or just the work area if you have different sort of cookie cuttered off sections. So I can go ahead and type in our sequence variable and say dot export as media direct. Now our first thing again is our path we need. I'm actually curious to try if we need the full path to all of these things or if we can get away with a relative path. So I'm going to say, I want to render this to my desktop. Now, normally you would need your C drive, your username, and then doc or desktop, but I'm going to see if this works. Then for the preset path, I'll just right click on one of my presets here and I'll copy the entire path to it. Make sure it's in double quotes and I'll make this bigger. And also the name of this is going to be max Q dot EPR, I believe. And then lastly, we put in zero for the encode the entire area. Now, I'm not sure that this is going to work, but let's try. When we run it, nothing happens. So the first thing I'm going to do, let's get the full desktop path, users, and then desktop. Another thing is that uh, the type of slash you use often makes a difference in Premiere. So if I'm using these backslashes, I actually need to give it two because of the fact that that's just how these slashes get interpolated down into a single slash. So I'll save this and run it. And something just appeared. It might have just been a save dialog. Nope, I can see it. It says encoding. So it's not letting me export, it seems, directly to the desktop or something is canceling out. Maybe if I try a different comp. I also have media encoder open. I'm not sure if that has anything to do with it. It doesn't appear to. 
I give it a new folder or something? I just said test. Do I have a test folder? No, it just created a file called test. So actually what I think that means is that we need to give it a file name that appears to work. Let's try it with actual footage. We'll call this my render two. And now it appears to be working. So I guess you can't just provide it with just a folder. You've got to actually specify the name as well. And if you know the format in which this preset is going to export, in my case, MP4, it probably will help to apply that as well. So now if I play this, my footage is now rendered out. So that's the basics of just rendering it directly out of Premiere itself. Another thing we can do is export a sequence as a project. This will take all the items that are used by your sequence, be it footage, uh, audio, and other elements, and make them into just their own project, excluding everything else that wasn't used in your sequence. You can go ahead and comment this out and below it say sequence.export as project. And you can imagine uh, we're going to want to do something very similar here and specify where we want to save it. In my case, I'll call this myRender2.PR project. I think we would need to provide it with that, but let me check export to as project. Requires an output path. It doesn't say whether that's a string or if it needs to include the file extension, but let's go ahead and try this. And now you can see we have myRender2.PR project. I can go ahead and open that up and you can see it just includes the footage inside of this uh, sequence as well as the sequence itself. So that's how you can render out footage from a sequence directly out of Premiere as well as how to save just the data from that sequence into its own project. And these are super useful to just get a render done and automate it or to save individual things from your project as their own projects. That was really the meat of this tutorial, but now I'm going to briefly go over some Adobe Media Encoder functions uh, of code that you can give it to send this scripting code to Media Encoder to render out something more specific from a project. Um, in this case, we could just call this script in any scripting program that can connect to Adobe, like a Visual Studio Code uh, or Extend Script. And if you run app.encoder.encode file, uh, or app.encode project item or app.encoder.encode sequence. These are three different things that we can individually send over to Media Encoder. So th for this last part, I'm going to take some code here. First, I'm going to launch the encoder actually and see that if that works. And we're going to be looking at what we can do in terms of sending things to Media Encoder. So if I go ahead and save this and I just want to launch the encoder, you can see just like that, we will launch Media Encoder. Now let's take a look at three different functions we can use uh, from within our Premiere script that directly changes over and sends information to Media Encoder. These would be encode file, encode project item, and encode sequence. As you might be able to tell by the names of these, one of them we can encode an entire file, one of them we can encode an entire project item or something in here, or we can encode a sequence, which is something we have open here. If we look at the guide, we have this encode file method, which requires a file path, an output path, a preset path, a work area, and a remove upon completion. As well, it looks like two additional arguments that aren't listed for the in and out points. Uh, for this case, let's just copy some data from our export media as direct. For the input file path, we're gonna to have to pick something from our computer. So I'm going to pick this already rendered video from my desktop, which remember is just this guy here. And I'll go ahead and paste that here in my input file path inside of quotations. Then we need the output file path. Let's go ahead and paste the same exact thing, but I'm going to add underscore converted to it. Then I'm gonna use my same preset in this case, I'm using these, I think, forward slashes instead of backslashes. Um, and that's just going to be using my max quality preset. And then I'm going to say zero for the entire work area and one to remove the job from a media encoder once it's finished rendering, which I'm going to close. And uh, let's go ahead and save this and run it. 
So first we should see media encoder launch. It's going to add that video called render to, and it's going to set up the output to save to the same place, my desktop, and call it render to underscore converted. Now, the reason this didn't start is because we need to say app.encoder.startbatch. So lastly, if I save this and run it, now it will start uh, media encoder, add the video, and then start rendering it out of the program. Now, there's two other ways we can send jobs over to media encoder, and that's using encode project item and encode sequence. All right, so now let's look at how we can encode a project item. Project items are all these things over here in our project panel. This could be a piece of footage or a sequence that we want to render. So I'm going to go in and first alert app.project.rootitem.sequences, and I wanna grab the first sequence available and grab the name. So I'll save this and run it. And in this case, we're not getting anything. So I think it just needs to be app.project.sequences, and that gives us a sequence. In fact, this is the sequence of this comp open right here that I want to use. So let's go ahead and say my sequence is equal to this first sequence. I don't need the name. And then for app.encoder.encodeprojectitem, we first need to provide it with our project item. Then we need to give it our output file path. I'll just send it here and we'll call it uh, project item output. And then we need to then once again provide it with a preset path for uh, an EPR preset. So I'm just going to copy that again previously. It's always good to uh, reuse code. And I'll go ahead and just remove that as well to make it more visible. And then, just like before, do we want to encode the entire work area and do we want to remove the job once it's done? Yes. So I'll save. Uh, we'll make sure we start the batch, save it, and run it. And now I realize we're getting a sequence object here. This needs to be sequences.rootItem, I believe, or dot project item. Let's try to save that and run it. Let's see what. my sequence dot two string is this will tell us what kind of object it is it seems like we're not even getting that information it looks like I have double quotations down here so that could be messing this up there we go we are getting a sequence object and I think we still need a project item I can see it's loading though so perhaps it's adding this sequence I don't see anything on the desktop indicating that it's exported successfully. And we're going to crash Premiere. The good thing is, I of course saved everything before we closed. So we still have of course all the progress we made. We'll just launch the extension back open. And I will open up my re rendering file. Now I'm going to get my sequence.project item and I think this should work. Let me just double check. There's no duplicates. Run this. We get a project item. Now let's see if it adds it. Let's look at the encode project item in here. It does indeed require a project item. My sequence. I can say dot project item, right? Track item dot project item sequence dot project item. I'm going to comment out the start batch, save and run this. Okay, so I can't figure out why exactly that's not working. So if you can figure it out yourself, perhaps I'm just missing something in this tutorial. Uh, but this is the code you'd use. You'd encode project item use your your project item which I should be referencing here um, and then the output file location and name as well as the preset lastly there is encode sequence I wonder if I can just use my sequence here and this will work fine I'll use my previous sequence variable here 
or we can just use app.project.active sequence, which is pretty useful. I'll go ahead and update my output path to be sequence outputs.mp4. And then I'll go ahead and also copy my media encoder preset path, save it, and run it. And as you can see, just like that, we added the active sequence and are rendering it with our decided uh, preset. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. That's all about rendering in Premiere and a little bit of Media Encoder as well. But all that is built into Premiere and available to you with scripting. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the code for this in the GitHub link as well as this Premiere Script Editor extension to write and run scripts in Premiere yourself. And of course, in the description as well, follow us on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not a member of the Discord server, you can come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support the YouTube channel financially and get cool perks, you can become a channel member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, link in the description. Thanks again for watching everyone, we'll see you next time.